Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Today we will cover Unit 7, Notes 4. And we're going to learn how to write the equations for circles. But before we do that, I want you to think about when you learned how to write the equation for a line. When you write the equation for a line, you need two things. Do you remember this, this equation, y equals mx plus b? Well, this is an equation for a line, and it is called a uh, slope-intercept form. And what you have is, or what you need, I should say, to, to write this equation is you need the slope and the y-intercept. And if you have these two things, you can write the equation for the line. Now, to find the slope, like if I was going to use this little graph over here on the right side, I could count, um, imagine this, if I go uh, down and over, right, I would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my slope could be down 5 and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 5. So my slope, or my m, is negative 5 over 5, which reduces to negative 1. My y-intercept is right here. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept is at positive 1. See how that's 1 above the origin? So I could write my equation. It would be y equals, here's my m, negative 1, x, plus Here's my b, 1. Or if I really wanted to simplify it, it would be y equals negative x plus 1. That would be the equation for the line. And again, I needed two things. I needed the slope and the y-intercept. Now, you're not going to have to remember all of this for unit 7, but I wanted to point out that it's very similar to something that we're going to do when we write the equation of a circle. To write the equation of a circle, you also need two things. You need to know where is the center of the circle and how long is the radius. The equation goes like this. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And it looks really complicated, but it's not. First of all, the h and the k, those form the coordinate at the center of the circle. So the h is the x-coordinate and the k is the y-coordinate at the center of the circle. And then the r, that is the radius of the circle. I think it's going to be easiest if we just jump right into an example. Number one, write the equation of a circle with a center at 1, negative 8 and a radius of 7. All right, remember the equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. This is our h, this is our k, this is our r. So the center of our circle is at 1, negative 8. So we go x minus 1 squared plus y minus negative 8 squared equals, and then our radius is 7, so 7 squared. Notice how I just plugged in the 1 plugged in the negative 8, plugged in the 7. Now simplify. There's really not much to simplify with x minus 1 squared. But when you have minus a negative, that will change to a plus. So this can be written as y plus 8 squared. And then 7 squared, of course, is 49. This is the final answer. That is the equation for a circle with the center at 1, negative 8 on the coordinate plane, and it had, has a radius of 7. Let's try number 2. Write the equation of a circle with the center at the origin and a radius of square root 10. Where is the origin? If you're thinking it's at 0, 0, you are correct. So this will be our h, this will be our k, and our r is root 10. So again, use our equation. It's over here. I circled it in green. And let's fill in what we know. It's going to go like this. x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals root 10 squared. So we plugged in the h, the k, and the r. Now x minus 0 that doesn't really change anything by minusing a 0 from it. So we can write that as just x squared. The y minus 0 can change to just plain old y, because y minus 0 is still y. 
And then the cool thing is the root 10 and the square, the root and the square cancel each other out. And so you just get plain old 10. That is the equation for a circle whose center is at the origin and whose radius is square root 10. Will you please pause the video and try number three on your own? All right, so if you've unpaused the video, you might have noticed I have my equation here. It's not simplified yet, but notice it said the diameter is eight. Remember, you need the radius. So if your diameter is eight, your radius is four. So they might've got you on that one. So final answer is x minus four squared plus, and this can change to a plus, so it's y plus one squared equals 16. If you had 64 back there, they got you. Number four, write the equation of a circle with a center at negative one, one and passes through negative two, four, then graph the circle. So I actually like to do this in reverse order. I like to graph it first. The center is at negative one, one. Will you put a dot at negative one, one? All right, so there it is. My red dot is the center of the circle. Now it passes through negative two, four. So negative two, four, go ahead and put a dot there as well. Remember you go left two up four. So from that red dot, do you notice how the blue dot is left one up three? Well, if I go right one up three, that point is the same distance from the red dot. Or if I go right one down three from the red dot, that is also equidistant from the red dot. Or if I go left one down three from the red dot, all four of those dots are the same distance away from the center. So they should all be on the circle. Now think about going out to the right and out to the left. For instance, from the red dot, if I go up one and out three, that point should be the same distance from the red dot as the others. Or if I go down one and write three. Or I could go down one and left three from the red dot. Or up one and left three from the red dot. And you can see I actually wound up with eight points that if I connect them will form the circle around the center. So uh, next, let's think about our, our equation. Well, I know that this is our h and this is our k, right? h is negative one, k is positive one. But as far as the radius goes, this is a little trickier. From the center to one of the points on the circle, that would form the radius. So what I do is I make it into a little right triangle. I'm gonna just outline it here in black. This would be a 90 degree corner. Now this distance right here is one, this distance right here is three, and this distance over here would be the r. And so we can do a quick Pythagorean theorem. We can do one squared plus three squared equals r squared. And we can figure out, oh, what is the distance of that radius? Well, one squared is one, three squared is nine, one plus nine is 10, and then we have to take the square root. So square root, square root. And you know what? I am not going to change this to a decimal. I'm going to leave it root 10. So here's our R. I'll show you why I'm leaving that in a second. So let's go to our equation. Remember how it goes X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Just plug in your values now. So it's X minus negative one squared plus y minus one squared equals, and then root 10 squared. So remember how that cancels itself out? I love that, so that's why I left it. To finalize this, to simplify, this is gonna change to a plus, so x plus one squared plus y minus one squared, and then the square root and the square cancel out, and you just have plain old 10. There's the equation. So we have written the equation and we have graphed the circle.
Nice. Will you please pause the video and try number five on your own? So I started by putting a dot at the center at two negative one, which is right two down one. Here's the center. And then the circle itself passes through zero, zero. So right here. Now from the center, from the red dot to the blue dot is up one, left two. So what if I go up one, right two, or down one, right two, or down one, left two? All of those blue points are equidistant from the center, so they will all be on the circle. Now think about above and below. Instead of going, um, you know, up one and left two, what if I go, what if I go left one, up two, or right one, up two? So I'm always counting like one, two, one, two. Or if I could go left one, down two, right one, down two. Ah, do you see how those circles now are all equidistant from that center point? And if I connect them, I get the graph. All right, so let's see if we know our H, our K, and our R. Well, the H and the K are the zero, zero. But the R, we have to figure this out. So um, right here, this would be our radius. And so think about this little... Maybe I should use a different color. Let me use black here. So I'm gonna go this, this, this. This little black triangle here is the one we're gonna work with. This would be one, this would be two, this would be r. So we can do a little Pythagorean theorem to find the radius. One squared plus two squared equals r squared. One plus four, which is five, and then take the square root and I'm gonna leave it square root five. Now we have the radius. Okay, here we go. Our equation goes x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And now we just have to fill things in. So x minus zero squared plus y minus zero squared equals root five squared. Do you really need the minus zeros? No. So that becomes just x squared plus y squared, and then the square root and the square cancel each other out, and you're left with plain old five. And there it is. Nice. Number six is interesting. It says write the equation of a circle where the diameter endpoints are at five negative four and five seven. All right, let's, let's do a little sketch of this. Okay, so make a little graph. Something like this. And let's plot our points. Our points are gonna go at five, negative four, so right five, down four, about right here. And then five, seven, about up here. Now this is the diameter of the circle. So if this is four and this is seven, isn't the diameter 11? the distance between those, which means the radius is half of that, so 5.5. Okay, let's see if we can figure out where would the center of the circle be. Well, if, let's see, this point up here, let me just put an arrow, this point up here is seven units up, but the radius is 5.5. If I do seven minus 5.5, I get 1.5. So in other words, this spot right here would have a coordinate of 5 and then 1.5. That should be the center of the circle. It's halfway between the top and bottom of the circle, so it should be in the center. Aha! So we have this is our H, this is our K, and then our R is 5.5. I think we actually have everything that we need. Here we go. X minus, and then plug in your five, squared, plus, and then think about what comes next. Y minus 1.5 squared 
equals, and then the radius is 5.5 squared. We have to do a little bit of simplifying. X minus 5 squared stays the same. Y minus 1.5 squared stays the same. But 5.5 squared is 30.25. And that is the answer. Number seven. If the equation for a circle is x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 9, state the center and the radius. So the trick here is the center is opposite of what you see. Because remember how the equation is x minus h squared? So the x matches, the minus matches, the h is just regular 4. And then same thing over here, y minus k squared equals r squared. So the y matches, this would actually have to be written as y minus negative 1. Then the negatives would match, and you can see k is negative 1. So the center is the opposite of what you see. The center is going to be positive 4, negative 1. Let me erase that a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. See how they're opposites? of what are actually in the parentheses. Now the radius, remember r squared in this case is 9. So if I want just plain r, I'm going to have to square root square root, which r is then 3. It's technically plus or minus 3, but since it's the radius of a circle, you wouldn't have a negative length. So then you just say 3. Will you please pause the video and try this last one on your own? All right, here's what I got. The center is 0, 0. There's nothing behind the x, nothing behind the y. And r squared is 25, so square root. And you wind up with r equals 5. So there we have our answers. Last but not least, will you guys give Unit 7 Practice 4 a try? If you need some help, let me know. Have a great day.